Howdy, I'm Bob Terry. Thank you for joining us here on Westerns on the Web for another classic Western film. Here on Westerns on the Web, we believe that Westerns are timeless, that these classic Westerns, that these older ones are timeless entertainment fit for the whole family to see, and they have a lot of good values and lessons to teach. And that's why we're sharing them. Westerns on the Web has literally thousands of Western films in our archives that we're planning on sharing, and some of them are extremely rare films. Kick your boots up, relax, get ready for another action-packed Western, and we'll see you after the show. Now that they're out of the way, only you and me. And now... It's only me. Doggone funny. There ain't no way he can cinch a saddle on that nag proper. He sucks in wind, puffs out his rib, bows up his back, and he can't get him tight. <laughs> it don't make sense. Uh, Leaving her own horses and riding this here kind of crow bait. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's right, Trash. Sure don't do our social standing no good riding these kind of nags. Well, what are we supposed to be anyhow? Dude ranchers or prospectors? You ask me three darn fools on a wild goose chase. <laughs> oh, what are you talking about? You ought to be flattered to have the government send us on a secret mission. Pull in your blasted ribs. The only way you could flatter me is give me my own horse back. Oh, but then the mission wouldn't be secret any longer. You know good and well riding our own horses would stamp us as the range busters and not prospectors. Now let me do that. Did you get jarred up any, Elmer? Feels like it's broke. Well, what's a broken neck compared to secret mission? You know, Elmer, you and I are being honored by the United States. Honored my eye, what's it all about? 
Well, that's a secret. At least was as far as I'm concerned. You know, it seems like that Arizona gold is red. And when an hombre brings in some that's yellow, says he got it from an Arizona mine, the folks at the mint get some suspicious. Expecting he dyed it yellow, maybe. <laughs> Sounds like it. Anyhow, I know we're supposed to run down a fellow they call Jingler and find out what it's all about. Now, if you can stay on that nag, let's ride. What are you stopping here for? Well, after all, you can't pass through a busy community like this without paying your respects to the mayor. Well, if you do, you're going to have to look for him in the cemetery. No, sir, I ain't got no hanger for ghost towns nor ghost mayors. Now, look, Alibi, the only time ghosts are dangerous is when you don't pay them due respect. Now, come on, pile off. No, I ain't going to go. I get off, you way. are. Get him going. Boom. <laughs> Did you hear something? Not a thing. Well, I thought I did. Anyhow, I don't like it. Take a look down that street. Well, what's the matter with it? It gives me the creeps. I ain't scared of anything that lives and breathes, but when it comes to a place like this, you can count me out. I don't aim to get my hair full of spooks. Now, look, Alibi. A place like this should be looked on with reverence. It's a monument to the dead past. If we don't get out of here, we'll have a dead past. Oh, you're talking about gravestones. Dusty means historical monuments. Well, I ain't finicky about the brand of monuments. All I can say is I ain't hankering for one just yet. I can get a lot later start and put in plenty of time being dead. Uh, good. Well, that's sure enough a skeleton, all right. I claim with alibi, this metropolis is deader than Adam. And I claim that there's life all around. Like, for instance, that coyote there digging a hole. A nice little Gila monster there looking for its mate. Varmints and reptiles ain't what I mean. They sort of have a leaning for ghosts and graveyards anyhow. What I'm a saying is there ain't a human being within miles of this place. What's the use of staying in a place where the only creatures that greet you is a delegation of trapdoor spiders? Anyhow, until it's time for the haunts to get busy. <laughs> a buck up alibi, what you need is a nice drink. So uh, let me escort you to the bar. What bar? I don't see none. Ah, but you will. That's what I aim to show you. There you are, the old bottleneck casino. You know, that used to be the most famous drink emporium west of Tucson. Deadwood Ike mixing the poison, roulette nail, spinning the wheel. Her motto was, uh... No limit this side of the pearly gate. That's right. Even her ghost wouldn't be so bad to look at right now. You're not kidding. If I have to go in a tomb like that to find a drink, I'm taking the pledge here and now. All right, all right, little man, if that's the way you feel about it. Anyhow, we ought to go over to the hotel and get our reservations in early. What hotel? Right over there, can't you see? Come on. I've heard that even presidents have stopped here, and that'll put us into extra good company. Hold on now. You don't aim to stay in that place all night. And why not? We sure don't aim to sleep in the streets. Well, neither do I. I don't aim to sleep nowhere in 10 miles here. We haven't got any other choice now, Alibi. It's too late now to cross the desert. Well, <laughs> we'll be seeing you. Hey, fellas, come here. They don't leave me out here by myself. Come here. Well, let's register. See? What the tell you? 
Ulysses S. Grant. September the 18th, 1879. Boys, we're putting up in style. Hey, Alibi, give me a nickel, will you? I want to see if that thing over there works. Dated way back in Civil War days. Yeah? <laughs> 1871. Here's one, 1883. 1975. What? 18. Yeah, 1870. Hey, hey, here's one that was coined only last year. Huh? Now I know this place is jinxed. Say, that must be the one you just dropped in. Listen. What's the matter now? Don't you hear nothing? Ain't human. The clock's still running after 20 years. Maybe some desert rat passed through and wound it up. Not any desert rat I ever seen. He'd be scared to. Scared what? The white o'clock? Yep, or come along them streets out there. They'll all tell you that every ghost town this year desert's haunted. <laughs> uh, well, uh, come on, let's go up and pick out our rooms. No, sir, this is as far as I go. If anything happens during the night, I'm going to be where the gift's good. <laughs> Well, all right, Alibi. If that's the way you feel about it, we'll go out and get our saddle rolls and we'll bed down right here for the night, huh? All right. What do you want? I just saw it. Saw what? The ghost runs this place. Oh, leave me alone. Father! Father! Wake up! You've been walking in your sleep again. Come on, sit down over here. Uh, yeah. Look, Alibi, will you lay down and get some sleep? But I tell you that I saw... It's as plain as the nose on your face that all the talk about who wound that clock sets you to having bad dreams. It wasn't no dream, Dusty. I see it just as clear as I see you this minute. Now get this straight, Alibi. There's no such thing as a ghost. 
And if there was, it wouldn't have the kind of muscles that'd wind a genuine clock. Now, you've been seeing things. Light out quick. Get some clothes on. We're in trouble. Things have got mighty quiet all of a sudden. Yeah, but they might start popping again any minute. I reckon we'd better split up. Dusty, you go up that way. Alibi, over there. Good evening, ma'am. Turn around. Much obliged, ma'am. Uh, was it you and that pop gun that started all the ruckus? I'll ask the question. What are you doing in our town? <laughs> I wasn't aware it was your town, ma'am. I was given a notion to belong to the ghosts. So it was you. Me? Me what? They tried to frighten us off our property with all that ghost writing. <laughs> well, it didn't work. We don't scare as easily as that. No, ma'am. I, I reckon not. And you can't frighten us by shooting out our windows. No, ma'am. Then why did you try to? I didn't. Then who was it? I'm sure I don't... Uh-oh, there go the fireworks again. Keep your hands up. Yes, ma'am. I could believe all you've said about how you happened to come to our town. Well, that's how I was wishing when I was telling you, ma'am. It was mostly true. Well, I guess we'd better see what my father thinks about this. Fine, ma'am. Keep your hands up and march up those steps. Well, don't you think you'd better keep your gun on me then, ma'am? Tell you, some of the fireworks I noticed come from right up there. And that's the exact spot that that clock, wine, and spook come from and went. All right, then, let's go up and find out. Now? Sure, come on along. Not me, and you better not neither. Or with everything pitch dark, you wouldn't have a Chinaman's change. Well, on second thought, maybe we'd better wait till morning. But anyhow, we ought to go on out and look for Dusty. What for? Dusty's old enough to look out for himself. Alibi, you surprise me. How? Every shot that was fired after we left this room was aimed at me. Well, if you're scared, then I'll go by myself. Maybe he's out there shot. Maybe he's bleeding. Bleeding, huh? He's been cutting capers with a female spook. And while we were out risking our lives. Clouds and rain have all taken flight. Oh. 
all because of you. The dark clouds went hiding, the blue skies appear. A rainbow is riding the range, and I am confiding whenever you're near. A romance is riding the range. The trail that was rocky is smooth as can be. Everything seems so different and strange. For the day seems so cheery whenever you're near. A rainbow is riding the rain. Oh, just a minute, Mr. Nordic. These are my two friends I was telling you about. Doggone it. Nowadays, one don't know who needs killing. Here, Father, let me have that gun. You had no business. Where are your manners? Oh, I beg your pardon, ma'am. After all, seeing as this used to be a hotel and it's open to the public, I... Don't you be too hard on Christ, ma'am. He means all right. Of course, I might forget some manners, too, if I was raised on a goat ranch. Well, everything's all right. Ah, it seems like old times there. Folks come into this parlor and make themselves to home. Nancy, ask the gentleman to be seated. Why, certainly. Oh, thank you. Oh, no, uh, no, Miss Nancy, we got to be going. It's getting late, and besides, your dad needs his rest. Uh, good night, Miss Nancy. Good night, Mr. Nordic. Good night. Hey, what's the idea of telling folks I was raised on a goat ranch? I didn't say you were. I only mentioned what might have happened if I was. Well, that's the impression you tried to leave. It's getting late. Let's get some shut out. Who is she? Nancy Nordic, and you need to watch your step. Why? Her father was a fellow with a shotgun. And that old he goat ain't nothing too backward about using it, neither. Who's he trying to perforate, anyhow? Oh, he isn't sure exactly. Seems like some hombre's trying to run him off of this place. But he can't make out who it is. The fellow won't show his face. How's he trying to run him off, then? Well, near as I can make out, but write and make believe ghost messages. Mostly on the walls of the old man's gold mine. His mine? Uh-huh. Where is it? Right here on the edge of town. Well, I thought all the mines around here were worked out. And so does everybody else, except the old man. He seems to be a little bit cracked. Well, I'll tell you more about it in the morning. Right now, I need some sleep. Good night. Good night. Good night. when this town was a-booming. Seems like the old man started sinking all the money he had, buying up everything in sight. This hotel, the casino, and all the main street, and the best-paying mining properties in the neighborhood. And then the bottom fell out. Leaving him flat? Yep, it sure did. Got nothing left on his hands but a ghost town. A lot of holes in the ground that used to be mines. What I can't understand is why anybody would want to run him out of it. Unless them ghost messages are genuine, could it be that Humans sticking around and sort of aggravate a spook? Oh, it wasn't any spook that started all that shooting last night. The bullet that smashed the old man's window was a real thing. Well, that was about all I was able to get out of that gal. She quit talking as soon as the old man came in the room. Wonder where Crash is. Yeah, he's probably out tending the horses. Say it was right thoughtful of him not to trouble us. I was just a baby then. Let me. Well, after we left, Nothing father attempted ever worked out. It seems that all his luck had been left behind. Then mother died. After that, he brooded more than ever. He could think only of this town and the boom days when he was king. It was the big moment of his life. That's very easy to understand. Yes, I suppose so. It wouldn't have been so bad if it hadn't become an obsession with him. He thought this town would come back someday, just as big as it ever was. And so you brought him back here? The doctor said he hadn't long to live, so I thought if, if it would make his last days any happier... 
Good morning, Father. Morning, sir. You're not going out before you have breakfast, are you? Well, I thought I'd go out and work up an appetite. I hope you found things satisfactory. Yes, sir. Everything was just fine. That's good. If they're not, speak right up. This hotel aims to please. Thank you. I wish you wouldn't go to the mine. Not this morning. After what happened last night. Oh, I'm all right. Old Betsy here will take care of me. From the looks of things yesterday, I'm getting mighty close to pay dirt. That's the way it's been ever since we got here. Each day he expects to strike it rich, and it's all so hopeless. If only just once he could find a little real encouragement again. Maybe then he'd be willing to leave before he... I know. But those ghost messages and those shots last night. I reckon I'd better trail after him and see that nothing happens. Thanks for the breakfast. Say, Alibi, there's something funny about Crash. I've just been over at the horses and they haven't been fed at all. That ain't surprising. What do you mean? <laughs> I've been rummaging through the saddlebags and wherever Crash went, that fancy shirt of his went with him. Oh, it did, huh? Trying to beat my time. Uh-oh, it looks like we're in for more trouble. Not me. No, sirree. I was just moseying here when that guy takes a couple of pot shots at me from behind those rocks. Hey, let me give her a load of this. Want to get killed? Killed? How? You haven't got yourself in trouble again, have you? No, I'm just wasting ammunition for the fun of it. Right or wrong. If you want me to be your conscience alibi, you'll have to talk plainer than that. Well, take a look at this. Gold? Yeah, gold nuggets. Uh-oh, so that's what's worrying you. Been holding out on Crash and Dusty. Where'd you get it? No, that's not it. These nuggets were loaned us by that government man that sent us on this here secret mission. Why'd he loan you gold nuggets for? Well, to show us samples. That way, if anybody started asking questions, we could flim-flam folks into thinking we're real prospectors. But I was a figuring on using them for something else. Uh-oh, conniving? Well, speaking plain, I've got a notion I'm going to salt a gold mine with it. Uh-uh-uh. Naughty, naughty. Well, if that's the way you feel about it. Well, of course, if it's in the interest of justice. Well, it might not be in the interest of justice, but something nearly as praiseworthy. How near? Awful near, Elmer, awful near. Well, then, if I was you, I'd go ahead. Much obliged, pal, for setting me right.
What are you up to now? Did you and Dusty been crying all over the place because you feel sorry for old Nordic and his gal? Yes, but I'm not advising shooting anybody to get them out of their misery. Well, that's not my intentions, neither. What are you doing with this? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Ain't you been a-claiming that what the old man needs is fine gold again to sort of ease his mind? Yes, Nancy did think that something like that might help. You know how any such fine could happen unless we helped it along a little? No. No, I don't. That's the way I had it figured, too. All I'm worried about is how hard that old shotgun of his is liable to kick when I shoot a couple of loads of this gold into the gizzard of his old mind. started something when you shot those gold nuggets in the Nordic's worthless mine. Well, uh, how bad is it? Oh, terrible. They're coming here in droves. And paying fares at $100 a piece. They're probably hawked everything they had. And you talk about me going out and hunting trouble. Now, hold on a minute, Craig. You just wait until that bunch of hombres finds out there isn't any gold. Just you wait and... What does this mean? What does what mean? Why, these blankets done up in a saddle roll. Well, it means I'm traveling, that's what. And you're traveling with me. Oh, no, we're not. Now, hold on, Crash. Listen, whose fault was we stopped here in the first place? Running out and leaving other people holding the bag. No, it ain't that, Crash. Honest, it ain't. It ain't just because we salted that gold mine. What do you mean, we? Well, you didn't stop me, did you? No. No, I didn't. Well, I guess that leaves me to shoulder my share of the blame, too. Yep, and that includes me. I reckon we're all riding the same colored horse. up here for everybody. And I'm selling you boys shares in my claim at the same price I paid 25 years ago. Well, Anderson, yes, sir. And I'm going to use this money to make this town better than it ever was before. Why, the hotel will be the lights of it all. Hitch up your horses and feed them some hay. My wagon is loaded and going away. I'm leaving, I'm off to my plan. Goodbye, old pain, I'm leaving, Cheyenne. My horses ain't 
hungry, they won't eat your hay. Good morning, young ladies, I'm rolling away. I'm leaving Cheyenne, I'm off to Montana. Goodbye, old maid, I'm leaving Cheyenne. Old Hank is a good pony, he pays us when he can. I'm proud of that. I'm leaving Cheyenne, I'm leaving Cheyenne, I'm off to Montana. Obliged. Just wanted to tell you that Mr. Nordic asked us in here to, to help him out till he got his entertainers down from Frisco. Want to thank you very much, though. Thank you. Thank you. And it's been wonderful for Father. It's the first time I've ever seen him really happy. And also, it's the first time I've ever known him to develop a streak of superstition. Is that so? Why? He thinks it was you three boys coming to bottleneck that changed his luck. Well, uh, what does he figure we had to do with it? Nobody knows why he's behind superstition. A black cat crosses in front of you, and mm -hmm. a little later you trip and break a leg. You know the cat didn't put the rock there, but you feel that you mightn't have tripped over it if there hadn't been a cat. Kind of involved, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. But, uh... I hope it isn't as bad as that. You know, I'd hate to turn out to be a black cat for your father. Oh, I didn't mean that. I meant that gold was there before. Ages and ages before you boys ever came here. Naturally it was, wasn't it? Well, it seems... natural for you to suppose so. Well, the point is, father didn't find it till right after you came. I suppose that's how all superstitions grow. Yeah. Speaking of black cats... Black cats and tough luck always come together. Well, if you ask me, no black cats needed to bring tough luck. You just leave a door open and it always pops in. Oh, yes, I... Now, now, boys. I think I'm very lucky to have both here. I need two strong men to help me rearrange the furniture. Well, what do you mean, two men? So you just get that boy out of the way there and show me what you want. I'll move it for you in a jiffy. Mm, a good idea. Let the little man show up. All right, now where shall we start? Well, let's see. Suppose we move the couch first. All right. Uh, where should we put it? See how it looks over here. Over there? Mm-hmm. Right over there. <laughs> well, I guess there's no use denying you slipped one over on me that time, Elmer. But what I mean, what's your trade? My trade would be your knee for a blonde's knee. <laughs> No, what you're calling? Hog calling. <laughs> no, what do you work at? I mean, what do you do? Oh, why didn't you say that in the first place? I tell fortunes. Tell fortunes, eh? Let me see your hand. Awful dirty. <laughs> too bad, too bad. Go ahead, I can take it. What do you see? Trouble. You sure got yourself in a lot of trouble. Well, I was afraid of that. How soon is it going to come? Right on your heels now, right on your heels. Well, ain't there no way I can duck it? Not a chance, not a chance. But it ain't going to last. I can see where it's going to end. Well, now, that's better. Where's it going to end? At the end of her rope. <laughs> Jim, Jim, Jim! Nordic selling shares of mine cheap. They're going like hotcakes. Come on. You sure knew what you were talking about. Trouble is right on my heels. You know, I think this room would look much better as it was before. I think so, too. Let's put the couch back where it was in the first place. Oh, Crash, I wonder if I could see you and Dusty for a minute. I've got a little problem I need to talk over. In a minute, just as soon as I get through supervising this job. Come on, Alibi, give me a hand, will you? What are you looking for? 
looking for? Nothing. I was just killing time. Well, you pick funny places to kill it. I don't know who you are, but this isn't the first time you've gotten in my way. Next will be the last. The safest thing you can do is get out of town. Okay. And close the door after you. Listen, Crash, old man Marty is selling shares in that mine of his. What? Where is he? We gotta stop him. I'm afraid it's too late, gentlemen. He's practically sold out. You would have been smart had you followed your partner's advice in the first place and left town a week ago. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I think you do. Salting mines is a dangerous occupation, particularly if the mob in this town finds out about it. Surprised, aren't you? No, not necessarily. Attempting murder is also a dangerous occupation. Yes, if proven. This belongs to you, doesn't it? Perhaps. At least I lost one like it. It was the night that your friend here was dodging buckshot. Pretty strong evidence, isn't it? No. I was just a spectator. Do you mind? No, not at all. Thank you. If I were you, gentlemen, I wouldn't waste much time saddling your horses. A few miles head start might be a great advantage. Good evening. Nice going, Crash. You were right all the time. It was the jingler that started all that shooting. It seems like the Nordics aren't the only ones he's trying to scare away. Alibi? You get Nordic and the daughter out of town immediately. Dusty and I'll keep an eye on her. No sooner said than done. and lift your hands. I'd kill you both if it wasn't that I want to get my message to those folks out there first. Move away from that door. Blab his head off. All I wanted was to make him mad enough to include us in what he had to say. Yeah, but Chris, the only way we can find out what he's up to is to get out of town and take that crowd with us. All I wanted was to make sure they'd be chasing us instead of the Nordics. to tell you, gentlemen, the whole gold strike was a fake. Why? The mine you bought into was salty. Nordic and those three hombres that have been living with him fixed it up between them. I overheard them talk just a while ago. That's why, gentlemen, none of you have found any gold. You've all suffered hard. Well, I reckon it's about time for us to hit the saddle. They're taking us like a bunch of tender feet. Are we going to stand for it? Get out of here. They're gone. 
Get your horses. Go after them. Mind the corral. Get the horses. Come on, man. Till we find him. You fellas back there go with Walker. You boys come with me. Dusty, now we'll ride back and see what's doing at Bottleneck, huh? All right, they must have given us a slip. Come on. like the last the folks are leaving Bottleneck. That town must be as deserted as when we first came there. Yeah, excepting maybe for the jingler. If my guess is right, I'll bet this is what he's been waiting for. Come on. see plain, but it could be them. I can't understand why they'd be heading back for the digging. We might as well trail along and find out.
but don't. Don't shoot. If you don't, I'll let you know the secret to make us both rich. You again. You know what I promised the next time you got in my way. I know, but, but... Oh, oh listen. Please listen. I can tell you there's a vein of gold. More gold in this town ever turned out in this bombiest day. I got all the gold I want. No, you haven't. Nobody ever has. No matter how much gold you got, you can always use more. All you've got to do is to listen. All right. Go ahead. Where is this gold you're talking about? There's a tunnel leading to it, right behind the walls of this cellar. The only man that knew about it was Samson. But now, he's dead. Wait a minute. I'm not ready for you to get up yet. Who was this Samson? Once he was foreman of the Nordic mines. That's how they happened to find it. A vein richer than all the rest. If he'd have toggled about it, it would have belonged to Nordic. So he's just walled it off. Figuring on coming back someday and working in himself. Yeah. But he got into his shooting scrape and sent up to prison. That's where I met him. He told me about it just before he died. He gave me directions and... and this chart. You'd better see what's storing at the casino. And I'll scout around at the hotel. It must have been him who rigged up that secret passage behind the clock. Yeah. Well, how did you find out about it? Stumbled on it by accident. And then figured out how it could come in handy. Are you sure you're the only one Samson told about this? Oh, I swear to it. Nobody knows anything about it excepting just you and me. That's fine. Now nobody knows about it but me. Get his gun. It came from behind that clock. Yeah? Well, let's have a look. It might be worth your while, gentlemen, not to act too hastily. How do you mean? I can make you both rich. I've got a quarter of a million in gold to be split three ways. Where'd you get it? All you need to know is that I've got it. Sounds interesting. Yeah. If it's there. I see you gentlemen are a couple of good horse traders, but this isn't sight unseen. Come along, I'll show you. And don't forget, I'll be right behind you. This isn't a trap, I assure you. But if you doubt my word, I have no objections in leading the way. Hey, who's that? He's the gentleman that started all the shooting the night you arrived in Bottleneck. It finally became expedient to dispose of him. But this is what I brought you down to see. Gold. Pure gold. Looks like it came from the men. You needn't worry about that. We'll melt it up and remold it. It'll never be recognized when it gets back to the men. You're a bigger gun than I thought, Jingler. A little keepsake from the Denver Mint. But you promised a quarter of a million, and the Denver Mint didn't give up that much in the first place, and you've been unloading it ever since. Gentlemen, 
I have a chart here. A liberal contribution from our friend there. It'll more than make up for any deficit. Well, uh, what does it mean? It means that hidden behind these walls, there's a richer vein of ore than any ever found before in Bottleneck. Hmm, then that property old man Nordic sold wasn't so worthless after all. Well, <laughs> hardly. But he need never know about it. Nor those greenhorns who bought stock from him. Oh, yes, they do. Government man. Yes. Dusty put the handcuffs on him. Now let's go upstairs and give the miners the good news. Just look at them. Biggest gold strike this state ever saw. It's wonderful, Father. And we owe it all to you boys. <laughs> oh, maybe, but oh boy, when I think how close we came to being black cats. <laughs> well, I've got to get back to Bottleneck and meet those entertainers coming from San Francisco. Say, that reminds me, we've got to make our report to the government, too. Sorry, we'll have to say goodbye. <laughs> well, goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Nancy. Goodbye. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Goodbye, Alibi. Goodbye, Miss Nancy. Uh, Goodbye, Miss Nancy. Goodbye, Miss Nancy. Come back to Bottleneck when you can. Nice girl. Yeah. You know, she's going to make some man a fine wife. Yeah. I don't suppose she was meant for either of us. No. Why don't you boys draw straws, or let's get to the Lazy M and get her horses. We'll be seeing you, folks. Wasn't that just very enjoyable, wonderful, classic entertainment? And it's timeless. Westerns are timeless. Thank you for joining us here on Westerns on the Web. Make sure you check back with us often because we're going to have a lot more Western films for you to view here online for free. I'm Bob Terry. Have a great day and we hope to see you again on Down the Trail. <laughs>